Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do a rider and in this rider we are going to try and use the theorems that we have proven. So far we had done three theorems. The first theorem we have done was where if I told you that the lines are parallel then we could say that the sides are in proportion. So in other words I could say that AD over DB is equal to AE over EC. But likewise I could use any other proportion like I could say AB over AD is equal to AC over AE provided that I always made the left hand side exactly the same as the right hand side. The second theorem we learned was that if it cuts at the midpoint then we will have that the length of the parallel line is half the length of the bottom line. Now the third one we learned was when the triangles are similar then we have the ratio is in proportion to the angles. The three theorems you need to work together in order to solve the riders. Now let's look at the following rider. They tell us in triangle ABC we have that B is 90 degrees. We have that DE is perpendicular to AC. <coughs> okay now if we're looking at the two triangles let us take the triangles ABC and then we're going to take the triangle EDC. Now why did I choose those triangles? If you look the 90 degrees is a big hint because they told us B is equal to 90 degrees and then they told us DE is perpendicular to AC. Now what do they want us to prove? They want us to prove that BC over DC is equal to AC over EF. Before we can work with the ratios we need to first prove that the triangles are equiangular. We know we're using that theorem because there is no parallel lines and the other two theorems we learned were linked to parallel lines. So if we take triangle ABC and we take triangle DEC we have that B angle B is equal to angle E1. They are both 90 degrees. Then we have that angle C is equal to angle C. It's common. Therefore, the two triangles are equiangular. If you have two angles are equal, then immediately the third angle would be equal. We have that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC and this is called equiangular or you can sim simply say similar, right? We have that the triangles are similar Right. Now, if they are equiangular, as soon as we prove that they are equiangular, it means they are similar, which means that we can work out the ratio. Now, if we're working with angle C, then on the small triangle, we have DE. And on the big triangle, we have AB. Then, if we're working with the 90 degree, for the small triangle, we have DC. And for the big triangle, we have AC. And then the last remaining angle, for the small triangle, we have EC. And for the big triangle, we have BC. So, we can prove that this ratio is the same because of the rules that we have an acuangular triangle. So if you need to put a reason, you can put acuangular triangles and it would work. But because you proved it on top, it should already suffice. Alright, now, what do we want to prove? We want to prove that BC times DC is equal to AC times EC. Now let us look at the ratio we have. We have a BC and in the ratio we also have a BC. We have an EC and we have an EC. Then we have AC and we have AC. And we have DC and here we have DC. So how do we make our fractions 
look exactly like what they want us to prove. We are going to cross multiply. So if you take BC times DC, you have BC times DC. It is going to equal to AC times EC. So you have proven the theorem that says in triangle ABC, angle B is equal to 90 degrees. Prove that BC times DC is equal to AC times EC. Now let us look at the following rider. It says that BC is equal to 27 millimeters. So what they're telling us is that the entire length is 27 millimeters. They want you to calculate DC and they want you to calculate BD. Now why are we choosing those two first? If you look at the entire triangle, you would notice two parallel lines. Let's take the first set of parallel lines, AC and EF. Now, what does the theorem state? The theorem states that if a line is parallel to one side of the triangle, it will cut the other two sides in the same proportion, meaning that if this line is parallel to this line, then how AB is cut in the very same proportion, BC is going to be cut. So let us take AE over EB. AE over EB. It is going to equal to 12 over 24. Now that is the value. But if we simplify it, we get a proportion of 1 over 2. Now since ED is parallel to AC, we can now say that AE over EB has the same proportion of DC over BD. Now we've already seen and simplified AE over EB, which means that we can now say this ratio is 1 over 2. Now what is our reason? Our reason is going to be line parallel to one side of the triangle. You have to give a reason every time you make a statement. So what is our reason? Line parallel to one side of the triangle. But we can't say okay DC is 1 and BD is 2. That is simply their ratio. It is not the length of the line. Now in the beginning, we had told you that when you are working with ratios, put an unknown next to it. By putting an unknown next to it, you can then simplify or use that values to solve for the length. So what do we have? We have that the ratio is 1x to 2x. The total length of the line would be 1x plus 2x, which is equal to 27 millimeters. That gives me 3x is equal to 27 millimeters. x is going to equal to 9 millimeters. So what is the length of DC? DC is equal to 1x, which is equal to 9 millimeters. And then the length of BD. BD is equal to 2x, which is equal to 18 millimeters. Now let us continue. The question says calculate the length of DE. So what we have already calculated was that DC is 9 millimeters and BD is 18 millimeters. What we're trying to do now is we're trying to get DE into the picture.
Now they don't give you parallel lines for nothing. If you look at the triangle BED, so we're looking at triangle BED, and then we are looking at the triangle BAC. Right, what do you notice? Number one, you have to be familiar with your parallel lines. Now, parallel lines are taught initially in grade 9. You can find a summary of a bit of the geometry in our grade 10 summary videos. Now, what do we know about the parallel lines? We have the parallel lines ED and AC. What we can say is that the angle EDB is equal to the angle ACB, right? And what is our reason? Corresponding angles. Then, what else do we have? We have that angle BED is equal to angle B. AC. Again, it's corresponding angles. Then, lastly, we have that angle B is equal to angle B. They are common. It is in both triangles. Therefore, triangle BED is similar to triangle BAC. Angle, angle, angle. Now how does this help us? In our theorem before, it said, if two triangles are equiangular, then the corresponding sides are in proportion and thus the triangles are similar. So, if the triangles are similar, then they are in proportion, which means that we have now got a reason to write down a ratio. Right, so what would our ratio be? Keeping in mind which triangles we are using, if we take the small triangle, the three sides that we have, we have BE, we have ED, and we have BD. That is from the small triangle. Now what do we have from the big triangle? Which means here B, A, C. If we look, we have to work with the angles that were equal. Now if angle D is here that we are working with, then we are now working with this specific angle. And the side opposite is BA. So with BE is going to come BA. Then if you looked at BD, BD worked with this specific angle. And that means that we are now working with that one. You have to take the partner that it is linked with. So with BD, we're going to have BC. And then ED was with angle B, so the side is AC. Now we have the ratio, but what is the reason? You can either write similar triangles, or you can write equiangular triangles. Once we have the ratio, we can fill in the information that we do have. You have the length of BE. BE is 24. Do you have the length of BA? It is the entire length, which is 36. Is equal to, do we have ED? No, but that is what we want to calculate. And then we have AC, which is 15. Once you have that, you can simply use your calculator 
to calculate. We're going to times by 15 so that it can cancel out. We're going to times by 15. So we have that ED is equal to 10. Now let us go back to the original question. Now it says calculate FD and BF. Now let us take the drawing again. Right. What they want us to now calculate is FD They want us to calculate FD and BF. Now, what you need to get used to is that if you see the parallel lines, you must be able to see which triangle am I working with. Now, you know you're going to work with this entire line, BD. You can see the two parallel lines coming out of it which means that the triangle that I'm now working with is ADB. You're working with ADB. If you see, you have two parallel lines. And from our previous theorem, we know that if lines are parallel to one side of the triangle, then they are in the same proportion. Which means, if I'm l working with ABD, I know that BE over EA is going to equal to BF over FD. And we need a reason, line parallel to one side of the triangle. You must put a reason every time you make a statement. We've done previously that BE over EA. What are we doing? We're simply putting the values, which is 24 over 12. And if you simplify it, it's going to give you 2 over 1, which is the same ratio as BF over FD. Now remember, the center one is the ratio. It is not the length. So I am telling you that BF is 2 and FD is 1 but it is not the length, it is the ratio. And we know that when we're working with ratios, it is advisable to put unknowns to the ratios. That would help us to calculate it. So, I have 2x over 1x. So I can make this 2x and 1x. Now what can you see? That the total 3x is equal to 18 millimeters. So what do I have? I have 3x is equal to 18 millimeters. x is going to equal to 6 millimeters. If I want the length of BF, BF is equal to 2x, which means it's going to be 2 times 6, which is equal to 12 millimeters. And then FD is equal to 1x which means it is going to equal to 6 millimeters. Now if you go back, you've now answered the length of FD and the length of BF. You've completely answered the entire question. Thank you for watching.